We have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and build profitable businesses. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice, while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Caro, hmm? is that mango juice? Oh yes, Odi, and it is very, very delicious. I'm so thirsty, I love mango juice. I know you do, Tony, but I'm sorry I finished it. Do you have some for me? Listen, today's uh, program is about mangoes. So there's plenty more where these came from. Well, and with the promise of so many mangoes, I'll let this one slide for now. So let's go meet our farmers. Caro! Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Coming up on today's show... The best advice for harvesting mangoes. How to make more money out of your mangoes. How to save wood through cooking with an eco stove. And we are going to find out how agricultural insurance can change the way you farm. Today we are in the dry county of Makueni, in a village called Kathoni. And we are visiting husband and wife farmers, Frederick and Elizabeth Ikulume. Frederick and Elizabeth have been farming on their shamba since 2001. It's a busy shamba that grows oranges, maize, green grams, cowpeas, scuba wiki, and of course, many mangoes. With three and a half acres of farm to manage, Frederick and Elizabeth are looking forward to seeing what help and advice we can give them. So Fred, yeah. uh, you are a jack of all trades. You are doing farming, mm. Ah, and I hear you're a teacher of some sort. Mm. What, what, what do you do? What do you train people on? I train people on investing in uh, stock exchange. Stock exchange? I also do farming, yeah? Agro, uh -huh. agro business. What challenges do you face? I face so many challenges. You know, like, like, like now, we have got a uh, shortage of rains. The crops are almost failing. Elizabeth? Yes? How are you? I'm fine. How is Makueni? Makueni is fine. I love food. Of course he does. Trust mm. me. What do you use to cook? I use firewood, the three stone stove. I get a lot of smoke. My eyes tear, lots of mucus and coffee. Mm. You cook crying. Uh -huh. Not because the food is sweet, uh -huh. but because of the smoke. Uh -huh. Do you also cry when you're cooking ugali? Uh, yes, sometimes. <laughs> that is so yes. funny. Too. That, yes. would Sof be, yes. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> Well, we've got the farmers and we've got the experts. So it's time to set up the tent and get to work. Let's go. And the tent goes up. Well, 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 Tony. Are you ready for a hard day's work? Definitely I am, Caro, and I'm also looking forward to having that nice juicy mango juice. Hopefully. <laughs> Good. Well, it's time to meet our first expert of the day. Let's go to work. Let's go. First on today's Shamba is Peter Chalo from TechnoServe. Peter is a technical assistant and is here to give advice on Frederick and Elizabeth's mango trees. So how many trees do we have here, Fred? We have uh, 150 trees in my Shamba. The yield is good? Are the mangoes doing well? Yes, they are doing well, but mm -hmm. this one we did have good harvest. Mm -hmm. What do you do? I clean up the shamba, I put fertilizer, I prune the trees so that the sun can get inside the trees so that the mangoes produce well. Eh. So pruning is very important. Eh. When you want to now harvest mm -hmm. the, the, the mangoes, how do you know it's ripe? Uh, I touch the mango and at the top if there's a hole and at the bottom the color is changing to yellow, then it's ready for harvest. Yeah. Is that right, Peter? When we want to start harvesting, yeah. we have to determine where we are harvesting the mangoes to go. If mm. it is mangoes for export, there are those qualities which we look for, like uh, the, the size, uh -huh. the color, and also the level of maturity. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Elizabeth, yes. how do you do your harvesting? I pluck the mango and place it on the ground so that the sap doesn't touch the mango. Is, is that the good way? Is it the perfect way? Or is there a better way? 
there is a better way of doing it. Mm -hmm. When you are harvesting the mangoes, you pick the mangoes from the tree, from the stalk, with the mango that the, has the right uh, maturity level. Mm -hmm. After picking it, you have a jute sack. Uh -huh. That is a size saw sack. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, then instead of placing it right on the soil, you place it on top of the of the of the bag. Oh. That will help to to have the the sap sucked by the the size of fibers. Mm. And also, when you place the mango on the soil, there are chances that there are germs on the soil, okay. and the, the mango starts to be contaminated. Uh huh. So Elizabeth, remember the bunia is very important. Mm. All right, mm. Frederick, mm. you talked about uh, this season the yield not being very good for you. Mm. What 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 happened? The flowers are affected by some insects. It's funny insects. It's this mango flies. I, mm -hmm. think, I think you are, you are aware of them. Uh, what are these pests and insects that he keeps talking about and how, how can he be helped? It has happened all over the mango, mango producing zones. Uh, the produce was not as we expected. And uh, that has been contributed by one because of climate change, mm -hmm. uh, which we also need to address. Mm -hmm. So we recommend that uh, immediately after harvesting, you start the pruning. After pruning, you start doing the, the fungicide sprays. And also now you start doing the insecticide sprays. That will reduce the level of affection by the fungal diseases yes. like powdery mildew yes. and anthracnus. Those are the main reasons why we add flower abortions this time. <laughs> so when we want to reduce that, we need to address by managing the crop from early. To help fight and control anthracnose and powdery mildew, Osho recommend their pesticide solution, Classic. Just be careful to mix and spray as recommended on the instructions. Okay. Yes. Oh, we are learning oh. fast. Yes. What is this? This is a mango fly trap. How does it work? It attracts uh, these male mango flies. Uh -huh. When they get to that scent, they think that there are female flies inside there. Okay. So when they come inside, they just die. We advise the farmers to have the traps placed in the trees, and that will help to reduce the damage which is caused by the fruit flies. Uh, actually, our mangoes have been uh, restricted from uh, export markets because a mango which is affected by fruit fly cannot even penetrate the export market, in even the local market. Uh -huh. How many traps should you place per tree? Is it one mango tree, one trap, or how, how does this work? The bait can attract the fruit flies from a distance of, let's say, 300 meters. Okay. So we usually say that uh, for every 10 trees, we can have at least one trap. Another question. Maybe uh, a, buyer, a buyer is in a hurry to buy my product, and he comes with so many uh, 20 harvesters, and he wants you just to cut the, the property immediately. Your farm is an investment, mm. and when you do the right things, you get the right product, and the right product gets you the right price. And when you do that, the trader will come again and again and again because he will have sold every mango that he got from your farm. Mm. Uh, but when you just let him do the local way, they are doing it in the wrong way. Mm. Those mangoes, when they go to the market, they get spoiled. And when they get spoiled, he will not come again because he will definitely got losses and he will not have money to come to buy to you again. Uh -huh. Excellent information from Peter about harvesting. Now, mangoes are a sensitive fruit. And when they are transported to market or processing, many are spoiled. Our second expert is a short walk away down the road in Kathoni village and is going to show us a good way of reducing mango wastage. Looks like the work has already begun. George Mathenge is a trainee technician from the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology who is demonstrating a sturdy pulping machine and how it can make farmers more money than simply selling the raw mangoes. Elizabeth, yes. what do you think of the machine? It's very good and I know it will help us. It looks good. It looks good. Where is it made? This machine is made in the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Uh -huh. yeah. yes. Okay, let me go to our farmers. Frederick, after you harvest your mangoes, do you get any losses? Oh, of course, we get a lot of losses. Uh -huh. When you harvest our mangoes before they are collected by the buyers, yes. uh, most of the, our mangoes uh, rot. Ah. They just, when they are heaped somewhere, uh -huh. waiting for to be collected, yes. they just rot, most of them rot, they are thrown away. So you go you get a lot, of a lot of losses. A lot of losses. Now, Mathengi, is that why 
there was a need to have this machine. Yes, this is the need why we have this machine because those wastes they have, they can be overturned by making some products which are of good use and for their security. Because the mangoes cannot be kept for long, but the product which you can make from that can stay for a longer time. And you can use it after the mangoes are off season. What is the economic advantage of this machine to a farmer? They have been having a lot of waste, okay? And that waste can be overturned to some profit. And when they get this machine, they will be able to extract the juice and that juice, after adding value, they can be able to sell at a higher price than the way they can sell a low mango. But how does it exactly work? This machine can extract 5,000 liters per day. 5,000 liters of mango juice? That is a lot of juice! First, the ripe mangoes are peeled and destoned. The mango flesh is then poured into the pulping machine. The machine separates the concentrate juice from the husk. The pulp is weighed to make sure the correct amount of ingredients can be added later. The measured pulp is then boiled to begin the pasteurization process. Once the pulp is hot, sugar is added. Three and a half kilograms to every 10 liters of juice to balance the taste and bring out the natural sweetness, citric acid is added. Lemon juice can be used instead. And from this super sweet mango sludge is where mango juice is made. And for extra added value, yogurt and jam can also be made. Let's say there are farmers somewhere with other different kind of fruits. Yes. Does it only work for mangoes? No. It works for a lot of fruits. You can work on mango, you can work on oranges, and I know you have oranges here. You can work on pineapples. You can work on purpose, mm. so it's not only the mango which is done with this machine. Frederick, yeah. what do you think so far? So I think uh, it will add a lot of value and they will uh, have bigger returns. So they will be rich. I'm sure you have with, questions. I have. How can we get it as a group or as an individual? In our institution, that is Jomo Kenyatta University, we have a department we call engineering. And they make a lot of those machines. And they only sell at 250000 per machine. Can it be purchased by higher purchase? Yes. Okay. Yeah. If you use a thousand shillings to, to purchase the raw material, that is the mangoes, after you add the value of that juice, it is supposed to give you a profit of more than 50%. Is the machine durable? Yes, it is durable. Mm -hmm. Yes. How long can it last? It can go for more than 10 years. Ah. Yes. Mathenge, you say it can make ready to drink mango juice? Yes. Can we taste some, please? Yes, of course. Jane, bring this juice. Ah, look at them. Looks, mm, I can't wait. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Ah. Cheers. 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 Long life. So, we've learned the best way of harvesting mangoes. And how to make some good juice from your mangoes. But, there's still a lot of work to do. Coming up after the break. Saving time and money, cooking on an eco stove. And how agricultural insurance is changing the way we farm. That's all after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. But Tony, you must be really enjoying that mango. Absolutely. <laughs> Today we are at husband and wife Frederick and Elizabeth Ikulumes Shamba in the village of Kathoni in Makweni. And coming up, we find out the benefits of insuring your farm. First up though, he is our next expert. Paul Saidia has travelled all the way up from the Tanzanian Agricultural Research Institute in Morogoro University, Tanzania. Paul is a researcher and is here to give us his knowledge and advice about ways to save time, money, and the environment through using energy-saving eco-stoves. Elizabeth, yes. food is very important. What do you use for cooking? I use firewood to cook. Uh -huh. mm. uh, and where do you get this firewood? We have a big challenge getting firewood here. We either buy or cut down a tree. 
and cutting trees is not also very good. Mm. Yes. Uh, how long do you take to cook? It takes two to three hours for the food to get ready. Two to three hours. Mm. That's a long time. Mm. Frederick, mm. you must be dying of hunger by the time the food is ready. Yes, close to starving. Huh? So it takes a lot of time. Mm. Uh, I also have a problem with smoke. I cough a lot and tear up. Uh -huh. mm. And uh, does Frederick have time to get into the kitchen to help you do the cooking? Sometimes, yes. When the leader rises, you know, we just live here, two of us. Yes. So we have to assist each other. Mm -hmm. Why would you recommend the improved Jiko? Mm. First, fast cooking. You save time by 50%. Oh. So if it is two hours, use only one hour. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. And you, you know why? Mm. Because uh, it conserves heat. That's why it is very efficient in cooking. Okay. Compared to the three stones uh, you are using, mm. you are using a lot of uh, wood, but also heat is lost because of the open spaces. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, yes. Right. Yeah. So when you talk about open spaces, you want to say the improved Jiko is like, it's closed, it's airtight. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. You know, there is no much smoke. Okay, so I would be safe. I yes. Would, I would go around here with the funny sp <laughs> smell. Yes, <laughs> yeah. But also you, you won't have problems of coughing. Ah, yes. My eyes. Yes. Mm -hmm. No more such problems. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. How is the Jiko? Can anyone handle it? Mm -hmm. Today I'll demonstrate the use of portable Jiko. Okay. You can move with it uh, from one place to another. Mm -hmm. All right. Is this improved Jiko safe? Yeah, it is safe. Less uh, fire angel. So even our children can be close to the Jiko, uh -huh. assisting mother or father while cooking. Uh -huh. And also they can pa take part in cooking. And are they affordable? Yes, they are affordable. Apart from fuel consumption, it is associated with the environmental conservation. Uh -huh. You use less firewood. So you will reduce the trip of going uh, to search for fuel wood. Yes. If you had maybe, you used to go three to four times a week, they will be going only once a week. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had enough about the stores. It's time we saw them in action. First things first, the fuel. Today, we are cooking using wood. Elizabeth will have to prepare more wood to burn for her fire. Paul doesn't need as much wood, so he can light his fire much quicker. Paul's cooker is up and running. Elizabeth is still organizing her kindling to light. Paul's beans go onto the fire, and already we are seeing and breathing less smoke. Paul's beans are cooking nicely, as Elizabeth's fire is only just ready to go. The smoke is already stinging her eyes, and Frederick's as well. <laughs> Fast forward, Paul's beans are cooked. He's breathed less smoke, he's used less wood, and he's used less time. As delicious as Elizabeth's beans will be, Paul's proved his stove is far more economical. The time they were spending uh, for cooking, mm -hmm. but also going to look for firewood, mm -hmm. will be used for other activities like oh. farming, mm -hmm. uh, business, and others. All right. Yeah. Paul's eco stove has really impressed me. But what about Frederick? This improved Jiko, uh, I'm so much impressed with it. And I would like even to have one in my, my home compound. And even uh, the whole village, I wish each, each family has one. So that we can uh, secure our, our environment. Because the former Jiko here uses a lot of firewood and it pollutes the environment. In Kenya today, agricultural insurance is a fairly new part of farming to consider. Many farmers are unaware of the benefits insurance can bring. Fred, you have a beautiful, beautiful shamba. Oh, thank you for your well, comment. Yes, well done, well done. Mm. Let me ask you, mm. do you have insurance? No, I don't have insurance. Mm -hmm. I've not insured my shamba, I've not insured my body, mm -hmm. my family, I don't have. When you hear about insurance, what, what, what do you think about? I think insurance does 
compensate someone, someone if he loses his property. Maybe by either accident or by person mm-hmm. or such, such, such like, like yes, this. Yeah. Yes, you're not yeah. wrong. Yeah. Joseph Chege is a portfolio manager from Acre Africa and he knows how agricultural insurance can make a difference to many farmers. For farmers like uh, Fredlick, I would say this is a small scale production system. And many a time, smallholder farmers feel uh, agriculture insurance is not for them, it's for large scale farmers. But uh, climate change is a reality. You never know what is going to happen tomorrow. So it is important to ensure your farming uh, enterprises, no matter how small they are, because they are available insurance solutions for both small scale and large scale farmers. What would happen if by bad luck, you lose all your cows. I just swallow it, but no, I have no choice. Oh, you just admit that I have lost. You, take, lost. you take your losses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if I tell you that there is an insurance for your cows? Oh, what would you say about that? It would be good news to me, otherwise. I've yes. never heard about it. Otherwise, I never thought whether cows are insured. I never, <laughs> I never thought of such a thing. <laughs> And you see, the cows have heard that and they are happy. When uh, a farmer loses his animals and uh, they feel that they need to start from afresh, it's unfortunate. But if they had an insurance solution, that risk is usually covered and they would have gotten a compensation. Now, if Frederick were to take out an insurance policy on his dairy cattle, his policy would break down like this. Frederick's dairy cow is worth 90,000 shillings and he gets 6 liters per day, which he sells at 50 shillings a liter. In order to insure his cow, Frederick would have to pay a premium of 4% of the cow's value. That's 4% of 90,000 shillings, which means a premium of 3,600 shillings per year. This means that Frederick has to put aside just 10 shillings every day from the sale of this milk in order to pay the premium. And what would happen if your crops fail because of maybe there was not enough rains? It has happened some years back. Yes. Uh, when it happens in that such a way, we just look forward to the oncoming season. We plant again. Sometimes rainfall can come in excess. We call that excessive rainfall. That can cause damage to your crop. Or you can uh, insure risks like flooding. Your farm can also be insured against fire. Your uh, farm can also be insured against frost. So it's a wide range of risks that are covered under crop insurance. You don't have to lose all your crops. You don't have to lose your cows. And you can also take care of yourself by getting an insurance. To find out more about agricultural insurance, you can connect through to us through our Aishamba call center on 21606. If you have an insurance agent who delivers or advises you on uh, the best insurance companies or the best insurance solutions to go for your, for your family or for your farming activities, uh, once you make that decision, you can either consult your agent, insurance agent, or you can visit any branch of these insurance companies uh, offering these uh, insurance solutions. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think the people around you, the other farmers, would love that kind of an idea? Yes, they will love it. Yes. If I do it myself. They will emulate you. It, yeah, they will emulate me because um, a retired senior civil servant, mm. they, <laughs> they know I, I am exposed to, 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 to things. That is Fish, nice. yeah. ah. I love hearing that. Thanks to Joseph for telling us all about how insurance is changing Shambas. Well, it's been a great day. And Frederick and Elizabeth have learned about mango harvesting. How to make more money from their mangoes. And a better way of cooking. Tony, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. I know you love food, but let's 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 finish work first. Hmm? This is this is good. Now, Very good. Indeed. Back to business. Very nice mm-hmm. to end the day on a high note. We are but humble. you can't leave without finding out how you found Shamba Shepa. Yes. Shamba Shepa mm. uh, uh, taught us so many things which will help us uh, improve our lifestyles in our Shamba here. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm grateful to Shamba Shepa for educating us so that we don't get into losses. I'm really grateful. 
The cook stove is good. No more tearing up. I really appreciate. I'm really grateful. Uh, you've shown us that when a family works together, yeah. then everything just falls into place. Of mm. course. That is good. Mm. What's still standing out for me right now is this plate mm. of nice, nice oh, beans. Oh, you like it? Mm. <laughs> very, very nice. And so our work here is done. And we'll see you again on Shamba Shepherd. Shepherd.